This is the Discovery Files podcast from the U.S. National Science Foundation. In the 1700s, early physicists first considered the possibility of objects with gravitational fields too strong for light to escape from. But prior to observations made in the late 1960s and early 1970s, black holes were considered mathematical curiosities. The first images to confirm the existence of a black hole were revealed to the public in 2019. Advancing tools and techniques are revealing more about black holes, but they also raise more questions that continue to capture the imaginations of people everywhere. To answer some of these questions, we are joined by Joe Pesch, astrophysicist, educator, and a program director in the Division of Astronomical Sciences at the U.S. National Science Foundation. Dr. Pesch, thank you for joining us again. Thank you for having me. I'm very pleased to be here. So for our first question today, what is inside a black hole? So a black hole is uh, made of two components, the so-called singularity, where all of the mass resides, presumably, and it's that point where all the strangeness happens. It's a point in space where the, the matter has been crushed basically out of existence. The mass remains, but the spatial dimension is zero. And that's where the weirdness comes from, because, you know, what does it mean to have something that's zero size? Well, this, this zero dimension means that the density is infinite, and that causes the extreme gravitational field of the black hole. Surrounding that is the so-called event horizon. Uh, we don't know what happens between the event horizon and the singularity. Once material falls through the event horizon, we can't know what happens because nothing comes out of the black hole. You mentioned the event horizon and the singularity, and I was thinking earlier about how black holes are depicted. And I'm wondering if the sort of sideways tornado that's been historically used is accurate, or if it's more of a sh flat shape or maybe something else. What would a black hole look like if you could peek around the side of it? What we call a black hole is the singularity surrounded by the event horizon. The event horizon can be thought of as the last orbit outside of which material can escape the black hole the singularity, and inside of which material falls into the singularity. So the event horizon is a shield around the, the singularity. And in the universe, it's a three-dimensional structure. So it looks like a sphere surrounding the singularity, presumably in the middle. We don't know. It may not be in the middle, but, but presumably it is. And so you have, you have the singularity, and then the event horizon surrounds it. It looks like a, 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 an ultra-black sphere. It's uh, black by definition, hence the name black hole, because light can't escape. Now, if that black hole is rotating, and when they rotate, they typically rotate very rapidly, large percentages of the, of the speed of light, uh, you might get an oblong structure uh, of, of the event horizon. So it's no longer spherical and, and like a globe, but it might be more elongated like a, like a football, perhaps. Uh, so that, that is certainly a possibility. The Black holes that feed, whether they're the small stellar sized ones or the supermassive black holes, material can't fall into the rotating black hole. And so it falls into a plane and then gets disrupted in this disk of material that we call the accretion disk. And so the matter in the accretion disk loses energy as it rotates around the black hole. And when it loses energy, it spirals into the black hole. So we have that spherical black hole, maybe an oblong with an accretion disk surrounding it, also rotating at, at uh, large percentages of the speed of light. What causes black holes? Well, there are various types of black holes. The so-called stellar-sized black holes that have a mass of five to tens of times the mass of the sun are caused as the violent end state of a uh, large star uh, much larger than our sun. When it ends its life, it ends it explosively, violently, and blows up as a supernova. And one of the possible outcomes is a black hole. The core collapses, that mass collapses into nothing, the singularity, and forms a stellar-sized black hole. Uh, supermassive black holes that are found in the centers of every galaxy, that's a, a more difficult question. We don't quite know exactly where they come from, uh, possibly from the merger of smaller black holes over time. What is the closest black hole to Earth? Uh, well, again, we have to look at the different types of black holes. So the supermassive black hole that's closest to the Earth is the one that's in the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, the so-called Sagittarius A star. And that's some 26,000 light years away. But the closest stellar-sized black hole that's about 10 times uh, as massive as our sun is 
uh, much closer at about 1,500 light years away from the Earth. That doesn't mean that there aren't closer black holes to our solar system. It's just that we don't know uh, whether they exist or not. What is a black hole made of? Well, all the matter that falls into the black hole, the mass is still there. Whether it's in the form of, of matter before it fell in or not is, is unknown, but its mass remains. Uh, and basically, that's, what's, that's what the black hole is. So the mass is in the singularity, and uh, presumably there's the vacuum of space outside of that. But we don't know whether that's the case or not. Now, uh, black holes are very simple uh, astrophysical objects. They have mass, uh, they can spin, and they have electric charge. What happens when a black hole is created? Well, the black holes that we know how they form, the stellar-sized black holes, are the, again, the violent end states of massive stars larger than our sun. When those stars die, their core regions, the central part of them, collapses into nothing, which forms the singularity, and then you have the, the black hole. In that sort of environment, the material that's very close to the event horizon will get sucked into the black hole. But once that's dissipated into space, the black hole just remains isolated in space unless it goes near some other form of matter that might be sucked into it. Are black holes rare? On the contrary, uh, black holes are everywhere. And the supermassive ones, we believe, are in the centers of every galaxy, certainly every large galaxy. The stellar-sized black holes, there are maybe hundreds of millions of them throughout our Milky Way galaxy alone, and, and so presumably uh, the same numbers in other galaxies as well. Is a black hole and a wormhole the same thing? Well, they're slightly different astrophysical phenomena. They're both caused by gravity. I should note that black holes were postulated by Einstein, and we now know they exist. Wormholes come out of the uh, theory of relativity as well, but we have yet to detect a wormhole. So a black hole seems to be an end state for matter, whereas a wormhole might be a connection between two points in the universe, uh, both caused by extreme gravity situations. Are all black holes the same? All black holes have the same three properties, or can have the same three properties. Certainly, they all have mass. They wouldn't exist if they didn't have mass. They can spin. Uh, they, they can be stationary as well, but we have yet to detect a stationary black hole, so we believe they all, they all rotate, they all spin, and they have electric charge. Uh, other than that, they come in various mass sizes. The extreme gravity of the black hole is the same from black hole to black hole. Uh, the variation of the gravity field outside of the black hole is slightly different the bigger the black hole is. But fundamentally, yes, they're all the same. Physically, they're the same phenomena, and they behave similarly in that if you get too close to them, you are sucked into the event horizon, and you disappear forever. Is a black hole dense? We need to talk about the singularity here, and the singularity is infinitely dense. It's infinitely dense because whatever matter created the singularity has been crushed out of existence, and by that I mean it has zero physical dimension. And so something that has mass and zero physical dimension has infinite density. So yes, they are uh, very dense objects. And this is what distorts space and space-time and creates the extreme gravitational environment of a black hole. Does a black hole have a magnetic field? Yes, a black hole can have a magnetic field, and in these supermassive black holes that are in the centers of galaxies, if they are feeding, as we say, that is, material is falling into them, that material forms a disk that rotates around the black hole, and the black hole's magnetic field and the magnetic field of the disk form things called jets. These are massive, powerful uh, astrophysical phenomenon that are in the centers of many galaxies, many galaxies called active galactic nuclei. Where does something that goes into a black hole singularity go to? Uh, well, that's, that's a good question. Presumably the singularity is a, is a physical space without physical dimension, however. And presumably all the matter is there and it remains there. Uh, this is a question that's difficult to answer because of that extreme state of the singularity, fundamentally that it has zero dimension. 
the laws of nature that would describe that sort of area of space uh, don't work because we have a zero in the denominator of the equations, and so the equations don't work for us. And so it's a, it's a very difficult question to answer, uh, but presumably the mass that falls in stays in the singularity and remains there for the life of the black hole. This one's fun. Is it possible that our entire observable universe is in fact inside of a black hole? Uh, this is an intriguing question. I suppose the answer could be yes. I'm not aware of any way that we can test this. And so this goes to the realm of science fiction. But it's certainly a possibility. The Big Bang event started off as a singularity. And who knows, was that uh, the singularity of a massive black hole? The answer is yes, perhaps our observable universe is inside of a black hole. But we don't know that. All right, for this last question, we had one black hole-related audience question that we didn't get to the last time you were here. How long does it take for supermassive black holes to find each other? How fast does the gravity message travel through space? Light speed? More or less? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And so gravity appears to travel at the speed of light. And so th as far as we can tell, that is the case. The particles of gravity, the gravitons, are moving at the speed of light. And so then the question is, a supermassive black hole, how do they find each other? And so let me take us to the centers of a galaxy where we find supermassive black holes. So our galaxy uh, presumably only has one supermassive black hole. But if our galaxy collided with another large galaxy, we could imagine that the supermassive black hole of that galaxy and ours will eventually find each other in a way that they, they might merge. And so then the question of how long does it take for that to happen is a question of an individual galaxy. Some galaxies are in clusters where the environment, the galaxy environment is very rich. There's lots of galaxies nearby each other. And as they're orbiting each other and colliding and merging, their supermassive black holes are presumably merging into, into a larger supermassive black hole. And that can take uh, a short amount of time in, a, in an astronomical sense. So I don't know, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of years. On the other hand, if you're a galaxy like the Milky Way and you're falling into our nearest largest neighbor, the Andromeda galaxy, that is going to take a long time. In our case, it's some four, five, six billion years before we start interacting. But eventually, those two supermassive black holes will find each other and, and presumably merge as well. Great question. The short answer is it depends on the galactic environment. It can be relatively short. It, it can also take a long time. Special thanks to Joe Pesh. For the Discovery Files, I'm Nate Potker. You can watch video versions of these conversations on our YouTube and Roku channels by searching at NSF Science. Please subscribe wherever you get podcasts. And if you like our program, share with a friend and consider leaving a review. Discover how the U.S. National Science Foundation is advancing research at NSF.gov. <laughs>